Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here, let's talk boxing, what an extraordinary night of boxing that was, Francis Ngannou gave an amazing account of himself against Tyson Fury, it seems to be causing controversy online, we'll talk about how I scored the fight and we'll talk about how the fight played out, you know, in terms of the patterns of the fight, I got it completely wrong. I don't think anybody expected the fight to go the way it went. I was saying in the preview that for Ngannou to have any sort of hope, he's got to try and derail the train by doing unpredictable things. And by the time Fury reads your patterns, with the punching power that you've got, if you're landing flush early on, you might be able to take him out. Now, we don't know whether that would have been a better approach. Who knows? If he'd come out and just emptied the gun, maybe he would have landed something big and taken Fury out. But we can't just assume that. So we're going to have to assume that his approach, because he did so much better than anyone else expected was the right approach in which case my analysis on the fight was completely wrong often if i'm going to get a prediction wrong the technical analysis will play out so for instance i thought that adelaide might get the better of fabio woodley but the reasons i felt that is because i listed all of the technical deficiencies in the preview that adelaide has got and I've explained how you expose those deficiencies. I just didn't think Wardley would be able to do it on the night. I thought that Adelaide would fight a completely different fight. And by doing that, he'd be able to minimize his own issues. The fact that he chose to fight, not the fight that I was talking about, uh, not the fact that I thought he should fight, basically. And the fact that Wardley was able to then expose those limitations, that's a different issue. The technical analysis still applies because of the way Wardley exposed those issues. Whereas in this case... Nothing I expected to happen happened. It was extraordinary. Now, in terms of the way it was scored, let's get into that first and foremost. A lot of the people out there, sorry, I've got the hiccups. A lot of the people out there are quite predictable in how they're coming about scoring this fight. The hardcore pro Fury fans are saying things like, well, maybe Tyson Fury was just playing possum tonight ahead of the Usyk fight. Maybe they just want him to, you know, underestimate Fury. Guys, that's not going to happen, first and foremost, that so close to that fight, when that fight has allegedly been signed. And in addition to that, you're in a position, if you're Tyson Fury here, where let's say you go down in the third round, second round, you get up. And then from there, you say, right, I'm going to dominate every round from this point forth. So there's no question mark as to which way the fight would go. That would be enough for people to be saying, wow, man, he got dropped by... An MMA fighter, after all, look how people were saying that Alexander Usyk didn't look good just because he was dropped by Daniel Dubois. People would have still criticised him. You're not going to leave it to be close enough for it to be a split decision. Tyson Fury was in there giving everything he had, right? On the other hand, you've got an awful lot of people saying this was raw robbery. There's no way that Francis Ngannou didn't win that fight. What are you talking about? And you know which accounts they're going to be. You, you just know pre-fight. Also, this is occurring with professionals you know you've got Carl Frampton with his beef with John Fury talking about how after four rounds he had Ngannou 5-0 up there's no way he was 5-0 up you've got Dan Hardy of course representing the UFC he's bound to go hard for for him um, you've also got though Lennox Lewis who's bound to go hard for Tyson Fury heavyweight champion of the world defending the heavyweight champion of the world everyone seems to have an agenda these days so I trust my own eyes and I've always been consistent on this channel I tell you my method of scoring I've told you forever I go with the guy landing the cleaner shots more consistently unless the opposing fighter hurts him. So if you and I are boxing and you land 10 punches on me and I land six, even if mine appear to be solid, if I don't hurt you, if I don't affect you, if I don't freeze your legs and make you wobble, if I don't do something that makes it clear that I'm busting you up, then you win the round. I can't just sit there and say, I'm assuming that the shots that I landed were tougher when they've had no effect on you no real effect now Ngannou certainly had an effect on Tyson Fury in a few rounds in three four rounds but in the rounds that he didn't have an effect he was getting outlanded if you're going to judge this as a fight who's gone home tonight being more hurt who's in more pain who's going to wake up tomorrow feeling more busted up that's Tyson Fury but if you're going to score it round by round Tyson Fury won the majority of the rounds. Six or seven rounds, he was landing the majority of the shots, the clean and effective shots. Now, I did see somebody, two people, in fact, say, Chris, what are you talking about? And Ganu definitely won four rounds. There was also somebody else who didn't address me, but just said I had Ngannou winning four rounds. That doesn't give Ngannou the win. Winning 10-8 doesn't mean it's a double round, per se. You just win by two points. So he would win, Fury would win, 95-94 if you had it 6-4 to Tyson Fury. You understand? And I can't see how Ngannou won five rounds. I can't see how he won as many rounds as Fury, even though he was landing the significantly 
more painful shots in the rounds that he won. There were just too many where his volume was just too low. Now, from Fury's perspective, in my opinion, he looked utterly washed. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that he fought in Ganu, right? This is not a question of, oh, you know, because it's in Ganu, I'm underrating him. If anything, I think a lot of people were expecting this to be so easy, as was I. I was expecting it to be showboating out there, that when you then start to see it being really competitive, people start to go, oh, that's got to go to Nganu that round. When in reality, it's being edged by the guy that you consider to be winning it with ease. And so it sort of skews people's judgments. But forget Nganu, forget all that. Fury's coordination did not look good. The speed that he usually has wasn't there his agility wasn't there he looked panicked there were moments where he was throwing a punch and then just looking to grab and hold he looked desperate he looked desperate in there he did not look right the coordination and so on and so forth a lot of people are saying maybe it's poor preparation i think it's more than that because when i saw the chisora fight i thought he was doing some really clever things with the way he was using his hands to affect the balance of chisora and stuff like that really good veteran highly skilled things but from a physical perspective i've been saying for a while now tyson fury does not look the same he's slowing down significantly his legs have gone and i've been saying this when he was going to fight deontay wilder the third time right after that terrific performance in the second fight i don't think he moves in the way that he used to move he's not the fury that beat Vladimir Klitschko, for instance. He's not the fury that beat Chisora in the second fight. He's not the fury that beat Deontay Wilder in the second fight. He's just not that guy. And the question is, how much has he declined? To me, tonight, the way he looked, I would not be picking him over Alexander Usyk. I would not be picking him over Anthony Joshua. In fact, there are a few top 10 fighters in there that I would pick, against, uh, that would pick over Tyson Fury at this stage. Now, is it possible that he's had such a terrible year in terms of preparation, he's going to get his body into shape, and he's going to look different against Alexander Usyk, it's possible, but to me, that phrase man, your body is a temple, he has been abusing his body for a long time, and this is not Monday uh, morning quarterbacking as the phrase goes, because I've been saying this for a long time on this channel, for a number of years now, Tyson Fury will get to a point where he falls off a cliff physically, you can't be sitting there abusing your body with drugs and alcohol and blowing up with your weight and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden think you're just going to be an elite athlete for the rest of your life. It's just not going to happen. Is this also the reason, by the way, we've seen him take on the likes of Chisora and then go for Nganu before the undisputed title fight? Was it a case of him saying, you know what, behind the scenes, I know I'm not that same guy. And so I need to cash out. Is that what we're seeing here? The process of a cash out. After all, Babich has been saying that Tyson Fury has been carrying these terrible injuries and that he would have picked Joe Joyce over him. And he was saying this at the beginning of the year. Would you pick Tyson Fury over Joe Joyce based on tonight's performance? No. Now, one of the things that Nganu was doing, which was brilliant, is timing the backhand with a left hook. Fury would seek to step in with that jab and then right hand and really put something behind it. And it was bouncing off of the indestructible skull of Nganu. And Nganu was punching with him. He was timing him. And he was landing that left hook. Now, he was landing it on the top of the head of Fury. And he, he did knock him down. I don't think he was seriously hurt. He seemed like he seemed when he got knocked down in the third world of fight. He's looking. He's, he's almost in shock. There's almost that look on his face of, shall I even bother getting up? But he was clearly feeling these shots. So although it was a flash knockdown, it was a proper knockdown. And I liked the fact as well that Nganu threw a European hook rather than an American hook. In other words, rather than having his fist up, he had it sideways uh, with his palm down. Now, the reason that that helps in that scenario is because as Fury's throwing that right hand, he's ducking behind the shoulder. And by hiding behind the shoulder, you're in a position whereby if you're throwing the, the, the fist with your palm facing you, you've got more of a surface area, you could clip the shoulder. By throwing the more traditional European hook with the palm down, you leave, there's more, uh, less of a space for you to have to clear. And he was catching him just above the temple. It was a brilliant way of throwing his hook for this specific um, fight. And Tyson Fury was not getting low enough behind that shoulder when he was throwing the right hand. So even the, his concept of spacing, coordination, how he was hiding himself when he was up close, he was almost just grabbing um, Nganu. And whilst I understand Nganu's the mixed martial artist, he's going to have a lot more experience with the clinching and the grappling. One thing MMA fighters don't do is operate on the inside with punching because they're so used to clinching and takedowns and stuff like that. You're not going to have the luxury of sitting there for... 30 seconds and bang into the body when fury was inside he wasn't even targeting the body it, he just didn't look like he was the same guy it looked like he was relying on physicality and size and when that wasn't working he almost looked 
panicked. He didn't know whether to commit to a jab or stand off the jab. It was just a really, really poor performance from Tyson Fury. He adjusted in the second half of the fight. And uh, in the second half of the fight, he actually started to lose a couple of the rounds. I thought Nganu started to have a, a good seventh and eighth round. But then Nganu's output dropped again in the ninth and the tenth. And Fury was keeping it long and f flicking that jab out. But you have to say that Fury didn't exactly snowball. He didn't get stronger as the fight went on. It's just a case of Nganu seemed to be tiring and Fury then seemed to keep it long. So I didn't see anything in there tonight where I thought, you know what, that impressed me from Fury. That was a saving grace from Fury. To me, he looked washed. He looks like a shadow of the fighter he used to be. And I will say this, I've never revealed my pick for Fury versus Usyk. And I'm not going to talk about the technical elements of it because the fight's going to happen, so I'll bring a technical breakdown. But one thing I'll say, I might as well reveal it now, I always felt that that was a genuine 50-50 fight that could have gone either way. There seemed to be this consensus that Tyson Fury was the favourite. He would do Alexander Usyk. A few hardcore Usyk fans were saying, no way, it's going to be Alexander Usyk, he's far superior. I genuinely feel that it's a, it was a pick'em, prime Fury, prime Usyk is a pick'em based on who gets their tactics right on the day. After tonight's performance, I have to make Alexander Usyk a strong favourite. Not because of the stylistic elements, because Usyk's nothing like Nganu, and certain strengths that Nganu has, Usyk doesn't have. But just the fact that Fury himself didn't look right. Now, in terms of those stylistic differences, if you are somebody that is, say, a Fury fan and you're looking for a bit of hope, let me provide you an opposing argument, even though it's not one I buy into, okay? I personally feel, like I said, a number of fighters in the top 10 tonight would have taken, Anson, would have taken Tyson Fury, including Anthony Joshua. But here's the thing. Anthony Joshua does not have the chin of Francis Ngannou. He was caught flush with a lot of shots and he was punching with Tyson. It's arguable that nobody Tyson Fury has fought and nobody in the heavyweight division, except for possibly Arslan Bek Makhmadov, has the physical strength of Francis Ngannou in the pocket. So when he's collapsing the pocket and grabbing and bumping you and trying to lean on you, a lot of these other fighters, Usyk as well, by the way, might not be able to deal with that. He might be able to break their construct with that sheer physicality. In other words, what caused Fury issues tonight might not play out against AJ or Usyk and so on and so forth. But the reason I don't have much confidence at the moment in Fury moving forward is because if you ignore the stylistic elements and just look at Fury's coordination, spacing, the decision making he was making, the fluidity, the upper body movement, these sorts of things all looked like they have declined. He doesn't look like the same guy. That's my take on it. Let me know what you think. Listen, man, as for Francis Ngannou, what an extraordinary guy. Just to reiterate, he could have been sitting here screaming, this is a robbery. He didn't do any of that. He said he came up short. It was like an admission that he lost the fight. I think he knew in there that he didn't do enough. But I want to go back to the drawing board, come back stronger, and I want to run it back. That is a proper warrior, a man that truly believes in himself, a UFC king who's now come very close to becoming a king in the heavyweight division, and he's saying, don't worry, I'm going to go back, polish my shield, polish my weapons, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to claim that crown. And this is a man that has overcome so much adversity in his life. He's an inspirational figure and a class act. He's always been a class act. And to be honest with you, I can't envisage them running it back now because they're not going to want to risk not going for that undisputed fight against... Uh, Alexander Usyk but with regards to Francis Ngannou I'd love to see him in there against a top 10 guy now he's earned that this is not to say that Francis Ngannou would beat the other top 10 guys because I genuinely feel like Fury looked terrible and I would not necessarily pick him over any of the other top 10 but he's earned that he's earned that position now put him in the fight against somebody significant give him that opportunity let me know what you think, ladies and gents. Please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button, the right cross on the subscribe button, and an uppercut on the notifications button. Thanks for watching. Chat to you soon. Take care. God bless.